Hello, everyone, and welcome. And um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. Um, I just wanted to say um, that the purpose of this evening is really to inform the school community about the IB Diploma Program at Sophia Mundi. So um, at whatever point uh, you are, your children are in their school journey, um, I hope this uh, information that I'm about to present is useful to you and informative. Um, and it's also a follow-on from our alumni evening, which we held last week. So um, if you weren't able to make it to that, I would encourage you to do uh, two things, to look out for um, some of the video clips that are coming, um, and two, to look out for the another alumni evening that is coming up ho hopefully in term four. It's a really great opportunity to uh, connect with alumni and to see how their journey at Sophia Mundi um, impacted their lives and how um, they reflect on it. And it's, it's really wonderful to hear some of the things that they've been saying. Uh, in terms of sort of housekeeping things, um, during the presentation, um, the will be managing the chat. So if you have got any questions as I go through the presentation, you're more than welcome to pop them in the chat. And I'm hoping to stop at various points in the presentation uh, to allow uh, for some questions, which Tanya will throw over to me. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll do a little bit of an open mic session where you can um, <clears throat> raise your hand open your mic and ask questions if I haven't um, been able to answer them throughout the presentation. Uh, so with that being said, I might share my screen and I might just ask Tanya to tell me if she can see my, see my screen. Oh, good, Ashley. Oh, beautiful, fantastic. Okay, so um, we're gonna start out a little bit with just an overview of the International Baccalaureate and uh, the programs that they offer and the pedagogical approach that the IB take. Uh, we're then gonna look a little bit at subjects and how that program looks at Sophia Mundi. And then we're gonna um, have some times for questions and I'm hoping to wrap everything up by eight o'clock. <laughs> so um, again, thanks for joining us. So um, the IB diploma program, the International Baccalaureate, is an organization, an internationally recognized organization that has um, four different programs that it runs in schools across the world um, from the primary years all the way up through uh, the final years of schooling. And um, the, uh, we offer the IB diploma program, so for years 11 and 12, the senior years as we call them. And um, it's really great to start out with a visual and so the IB has kind of created this visual to uh, show or to demonstrate everything um, that they believe the program is about and how they see the program uh, fitting together. So at the center is the learner, the student, the child, um, and it is really at the center of everything that uh, we do in education <laughs> and um, how they learn and how we teach is just around them, holding them. Um, and then uh, around the outside are what we call the core components of the IB diploma program, which I'll get into a little bit later. And outside that area of the circle are uh, the actual subjects that they study or the categories of subjects that they study. Uh, and outside of that is international mindedness, which I'll get to in a little bit, it's a core value of uh, the International Baccalaureate, uh, being able to be an international citizen. Uh, and that goes back to their, their history. Um, yeah, it's really important for them. Uh, so at the center is that IB learner, and the IB has uh, identified a set of qualities, human qualities that they call the IB learner profile, which are key um, to every program that they have. And they're a set of, 10 attributes which are valued by the program. And here they are in all their, uh, in all their glory. So um, there's quite a number of them. And we believe that these are, again, at the heart of the IB Diploma Program and of, uh, of the education that we offer at Sophia Mundi right through all the way from primary through to year 12. And so the uh, everything, the curriculum, the approaches to teaching, the approaches to learning is all aimed at fostering these 10 qualities. 
Um, and so we talk about them in our classrooms, we form our unit planners around them, we um, actively discuss these with our students, and um, all elements of the program are, are aimed at uh, developing these, these qualities. So they include um, risk takers, um, making sure that we are able to take risks and evaluate um, our actions, that we're balanced, that we are not just intellectual beings, we're physical beings, we're spiritual beings, we um, are beings that live in community with one another. And so how do we care for one another and how do we create a balance in our lives in all areas? Um, we're open-minded, we can appreciate our own cultures and the cultures of others. And we're looking for a range of points of view or perspectives. So a lot of the curriculum is about bringing in uh, different points of view. We are also aiming to be communicators. This is why we have to learn in the IB a second language. So we can communicate in a variety of formats and in more than one language. Um, we're principled, we have a sense of ethics, uh, fairness, and we can act on those in uh, a way that allows us to take responsibility for our actions um, and the consequences of those actions. And so um, they all, these all work together. Um, knowledgeable, um, developing conceptual understanding. We'll talk a little bit more about how the IB values concepts. And of course, we want our students uh, to be inquirers. We want them to be lifelong learners who are uh, seeking knowledge and asking questions. And so the IB program really wants to foster that inquiry. How do we ask questions? Um, what kinds of questions do we ask? What perspectives are we going to seek out in answering those questions? Um, and how can we question the knowledge that is being brought to us in a critical manner? So all of, these, uh, all of these qualities are really important um, for fostering both lifelong learning and international citizenship. So this was a really beautiful uh, part of the program that um, back when we brought the diploma in, we felt really meshed very well with um, the values of Steiner education. Um, and I put here on the right-hand side, we've got some uh, artwork from a, a current year 12 student. Um, which demonstrates a little bit of um, communicating in a way that isn't necessarily verbal um, and about caring and valuing the environment. This is a piece of artwork for uh, his exhibition uh, looking at uh, the environmental uh, impacts of particular human actions. Um, outside of the student at the center, we have the teachers and uh, other learners that the student interacts with on a daily basis while they're in the program. And so it's really important to us to be able to um, really clearly outline and articulate the pedagogic principles that are being um, used in uh, fostering the learning and how do we um, ask students to approach their learning. So how do we as teachers um, present information and foster inquiry and uh, develop knowledgeable young people and how do we upskill our students and uh, teach them how to approach their learning. So the IB articulates this um, through what they call the teaching and learning principles and so all teaching in any of the four programs that the IB runs is based on inquiry, uh, the questioning. If we want to develop inquirers we have to um, demonstrate that we as we can inquire as well and ask questions. We are focused on conceptual understanding. So while it's really important sometimes to know specific details, it's also really important to be able to develop a uh, conceptual understanding so that you can fit new information, information that comes to you over the course of your lifetime um, into these concepts. So we're working with big broad concepts like change, uh, continuity across a number of subjects. So in many cases, it's transdisciplinary. These concepts are not embedded in just one subject, they're across all of the subjects. And so it's really uh, a key for IB teachers to be working with students on developing that conceptual understanding. We're also seeking to uh, work with local and global contexts, right? Uh, learning is supposed to be real world, real life, 
and has applications to the everyday. And so learning takes place best in the context that students can understand, both local and global. Um, it's also based on collaboration. We really want our students to be able to work together. Um, often what we find is that uh, academics can sometimes be uh, very competitive and that's not the quality of um, learning that the IV wants to foster. Um, we find that we learn best in collaborative environments. And so there are lots of opportunities in the diploma program for students to collaborate with one another and work with one another to learn something new or to achieve something. Um, and so uh, teachers are actively designing lessons and uh, assessments that help students develop collaboration and teamwork skills. It's also differentiated. Not every learner learns the same way and not every learner um, yeah, uh, can um, access information in the same way. And so we as teachers are looking to differentiate um, so that students are interested, can follow their passions and can access, uh, access the learning. And it's also informed by assessment. And sometimes that's a bad word in some places, but uh, assessment is seen as a way to help, um, help learners give feedback about how they can improve. And it gives teachers an understanding of what needs to happen next, right? And what might be uh, the most appropriate for the next phase. So um, we also ask our students to approach learning in uh, particular ways and we're fostering sets of skills that we know that they will use over the course of their lifetime. And they fall into um, five categories. They're down at the bottom. Um, thinking skills, we're really trying to foster, um, again, that's an IB Learner Profile attribute. We're fostering students who are able to think critically, not just regurgitate information. We are um, helping them learn to communicate both um, verbally and in writing and um, working together, uh, which connects very well with social skills. When we're collaborating, there are a set of social skills that we need to develop. Um, and the IB really focuses very well on that. And self-management skills. So being able to be organized, um, being able to have resilience um, is, is a, a self-management skill. How do we build resilience um, in our students and how do we um, help them um, make sure that they can, um, yeah, be organized and work well together. Uh, and then research skills, right? If we want to foster students who are knowledgeable, it's helpful to understand how to research and write. And so this is a skill that we are actively developing uh, in our students through our curriculum and through our lessons and through our assessments. So these are the IB uh, pedagogical principles of teaching and learning. And so all of the curriculum is designed to foster all of those things. And I might just stop there and see if there are any questions about the general, general approach of the diploma program in the IB. And I might ask if Tanya, if there are any questions so far in the chat. No, nothing so far. Nothing so far. You must be very informative at the moment. <laughs> or people are waiting to get to the real specific stuff. Yeah. Great, great, fantastic. All right, so then the next question I think would be, of course, what do we, how does this all look at Sophia Mundi? What kinds of subjects do we offer? How does the diploma actually function? So um, at Sophia Mundi, we offer, um, well, the IB, the diploma works um, where students take the, a very broad range of subjects. And that's really, really deliberate. I don't know about you, but I certainly didn't know what I wanted to do um, with the rest of my life at the age of 15 and 16. And so it's really important that we foster and allow students to explore a really broad range of subjects. So the IBDP is really perfect for this because it's a requirement that students take um, a subject in all six groups. So you'll see here at the top that there are, uh, there are groupings. So group one, group two, group three, four, five, six, they're numbered for your convenience. <laughs> <laughs> um, group one um, is literature, group two is a second language, three is humanities, 
four is your natural sciences, maths, and the arts. And so at Sophia Mundi, we offer, um, yeah, a range of subjects in each area and a student chooses one subject from each column. And one of the things that we've always been really excited about is this bottom subject here called environmental systems and societies, which is what is known as a transdisciplinary subject. You'll notice it cuts across two different um, columns. It is both a humanities and a science, and it's an incredibly popular subject at our school um, over the years. It's um, one that our alumni have found particularly useful, <laughs> and quite a number of them go and work uh, in the environmental sciences and go on to study it. So it's kind of a combination of human geography and ecology and looking at how um, yeah, human beings impact the environment and vice versa. So it is, yeah, compulsory to study one subject from every grouping. Um, and then there are some compulsory subjects in the IB diploma, um, which are known as the core. And they are theory of knowledge or TOK, which is effectively uh, epistemology. So how do we know what we know? And we learn lots of things in each subject. And we don't really often stop to consider how that uh, information came to us. Why do we consider it true? Uh, and so theory of knowledge allows students some space to explore some of those questions and to really look at things like how does technology impact the way we know things? Um, how does language impact us as knowers? And um, yeah, it's a really fantastic course and it's quite unique, I think, in the world of um, senior secondary education. And it's one of the uh, one of my favorite courses to teach, actually. <laughs> it's probably one the students find um, quite difficult to, to grasp, but it's also the one that when they're finished with the with the diploma a couple of years later, they say, oh, that's the one I've used the most. It's that course because it teaches me to think critically about everything that comes at me in life. Um, and then another um, compulsory subject is CAS, which is known as cre it's Creativity, Action and Service. So this is really aimed at that balance learner profile attribute. So we are again, not just intellectual beings studying all the time. We are beings who um, need to foster our um, creative sides. So we need to uh, explore that. We have bodies that need to be active and moving around. And we um, also live in communities, um, communities that may have needs. And this is um, really the Estes service. Um, so the school sometimes provides some of those service opportunities, but students are really, really encouraged to make sure that they are picking um, service activities that they really care about. So they might be inspired in environmental science, for example, to um, work for, um, to, to lobby about climate change. And that might be a service project that they, that they do. Um, so it's really about pursuing their own interests and the communities that they are a part of, um, both inside the school community and maybe as part of their identities, right? Um, their family identities or other communities that they may be involved with. The third compulsory element is something called extended essay. Uh, and this is a research project of, um, in an area of the student's interest. So the IB is really, again, about inquiry-based learning, and that happens not only in every single subject, but it also means that they need to take responsibility for their own learning. They need to follow their interests. And so there are spots within the Ivy Diploma Program where students can do that. And the extended essay is one of them. So a student um, will probably be interested in a particular area and they will design a research question and be given a mentor who is maybe the subject area expert, and they can go off and explore and do research in that particular area. And they produce a 4,000 word research paper. And I, as a mentor, have learned so much about the things that my students are interested in um, through that process. I learn just about as much, if not more, <laughs> than they do um, in doing that. And often our students point to the extended essay as the thing that really gave them the kinds of skills, practical skills in terms of research and writing and um, 
being um, authentic in their, um, yeah, in terms of being able to uh, cite sources and things like that. Um, that's something that they often point to as the project that really assisted them uh, in developing some skills for university. Um, yeah, so those are the sort of, those are the subjects, that's the course, and the uh, columns are the subjects we currently offer. Um, so here are some common questions that I get. Does my child have to take a subject from all six groups? Uh, yes. At Sophia Mundi, we really value the arts. So according to the IB, the arts are um, not a compulsory subject, but at Sophia Mundi, we strongly encourage everybody to take an art um, because we, we believe it really fits with our core values of uh, creativity and imagination. And often our students say to us, oh, it's a really great way for me to do something with my hands, really practical, and it feeds me um, when I'm after a really long day, because our arts are usually in the afternoon after a really long day of doing all that head work, I can go into the art studio and create something. And it's something that we really encourage our students to, to pursue. Um, another common question is why aren't all subjects offered at SLN uh, standard level and higher level? I might get to that one a little later when I explain higher level and standard level subjects. Um, yes, some subjects are also required for particular university courses. Um, so this is often around um, mathematics and the sciences. Um, can my students study an IDD diploma course at another school? Um, some, some people will say, oh, the course that I'm looking for, the subject I'm looking for isn't offered at Sophia Mundi. Can I go somewhere else and study that course but stay at Sophia Mundi because I really like it here? Um, unfortunately, the answer to that one is no. <laughs> um, you, you have to be, uh, be with us the whole time. And can you request a subject always? Right, the school um, always would like to hear what subjects uh, the, the students in the community want. We can't always guarantee, of course, that we're able to offer them. But um, yeah, sometimes subjects, we've had subjects come and go. And we like to work with our community in terms of what is interesting to them. So how do we put together a course for a student? That's probably the next question. Okay, um, and this is where we get into a little bit more detail. <laughs> um, so of your six subjects, one, two, three, four, five, six, everybody takes the compulsory, so we don't have to worry about that so much. We can put it aside for the moment. But um, some of these subjects you'll notice are offered at what is called higher level and another at what is called standard level. So higher level subjects are um, subjects which may uh, the student may be interested in, may feel that they're really good at, um, and yeah, so they're offered at, uh, there's more coursework and more course hours are dedicated to higher level subjects. And then there's subjects known as standard level subjects, which um, may have less coursework and fewer assessments and fewer course hours. And we would generally encourage students who maybe are not as strong in certain areas to take that course at standard level. So in order to earn a diploma, you have to have three higher level courses and three standard level courses, because of course, we're not all good at everything. And that's okay, that's kind of built in to the system. Um, and so, um, yeah, in the diploma, you study three subjects at higher level, three subjects at standard level, and the compulsory core subjects. Um, another question I often get is, of course, how are the subjects marked? Some of us might be used to percentages or uh, yeah, percentages is probably how most of us uh, went through school. <laughs> In the IB, they use something called criteria-based marking, um, which is um, qualitative in nature in many ways. Um, that doesn't mean it's not rigorous, it is very rigorous, um, but it's criteria-based. So that if you meet the standard, you uh, can achieve that particular grade or mark. Um, and so again, it's not set up to be competitive. There's not a bell curve that we have to fit all students into. If you meet the criteria and you've achieved, then you have achieved. And um, again, this fosters, in my opinion, a, a sense of cooperation rather than competitiveness in the classroom. So subjects in the diploma are marked out of seven. So each of your six subjects are marked out of seven. Why seven? Don't ask, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've never been able to figure out the answer to that question. Um, so that means that, of course, seven times six is 42. And the total diploma is marked out of 45. Where do the extra three points come from? They come from TOK, Theory of Knowledge, and Extended Essay. And these are marked on an A to E scale. And a combination of two A's will get you three marks. A combination of an A and a B will get you two marks, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how we get to 45. And creativity, action, and service is pass fail. Because if we were to mark service, how would we do that? It defeats the purpose, really, of that kind of activity. So you do it or you don't. And if you don't do it, you don't earn the diploma. That's how important, that's how central, that's how core it is to the program. That's how important it is. Um, so it's not a tick box exercise. It's meant to be a genuine, a genuine thing. So um, that is sort of how, how we put together a course of study. We work with the student and the family to uh, work out you know, what the student might, might want to do after they graduate. Uh, and we look at universities and say, well, what are the prerequisites? Um, but really what we're asking is, what is the student good at? What do they enjoy? And we try and put together a course of study that works, uh, works for them and plays to their strengths and interests. And um, if you were at the alumni evening, we had an alumni discuss how they took environmental science, never thinking that they would ever be interested in doing anything with environmental science. They thought they were gonna go into the humanities, or the arts, and they are now doing a master's in environmental science. So uh, you never know <laughs> exactly how you will use any of your subjects. Um, so it is really important that you do something as a student that you enjoy and that, you, um, that you're good at while challenging yourself in areas where you might not feel as strong. And that's part of being a good risk taker, <laughs> which is of course, again, at the heart of the IB. Uh, in terms of pathways, this is often the next question. You know, what is the IV diploma in a practical sense? Where does it get me? Where do I, what, what can I do with it? And how does it compare to the VCE or other graduating pathways that are out there? Um, so those of you who might have grown up in Victoria or in Australia might know about something called the ATAR score or the Australian Tertiary <laughs> Ranking Score. Um, this is a piece of practical information that you might want to know. If a student passes their diploma or earns their diploma, as we like to say, um, their score is converted to an ATAR score. And of course, many universities are using ATAR scores as a, a way of um, yeah, gaining entrance into university. Of course, university isn't the be all end all. And so lots, some of our students uh, choose not to go to university. They might earn the diploma and then choose not to go. They might take gap years, they might go straight to work. Um, there's lots of options. So the idea is that the diploma allows you um, lots of options. Um, if a student misses out on their diploma, there are lots of different options for them. They can do retakes, they can use direct entry schemes to a university, um, or they can do TAFE, or, or they uh, and gain entry uh, to a university course through a college or TAFE system. So again, we don't necessarily emphasize the ATAR score, um, but it is a really important, um, important piece of the puzzle for, uh, for some people, but it is again, not, the, not everything necessarily. Yeah, and lots of universities are starting to do more direct entry and acknowledge IB diploma courses and giving college credit uh, or university credit. Uh, to those students who have taken diploma courses, even if they haven't necessarily earned the full diploma. So I might. Oh, yeah. Um, the next question sometimes people ask me, of course, is how are the marks actually calculated? This sometimes if we get down into the detail, how do I get that seven? What do I have to do? How do I? Um, yeah, how do I manage that? So um, every IB subject, so you've got your our six subjects, each IB subject, um, has two assessment components, sometimes three, and they're broken down into two categories. One is um, called the internal assessment. So this is a project that is done at school under the supervision of the teacher, and it's usually project-based. Yeah, And um, it's student-directed. So again, it's an opportunity for students to pursue something that they are interested 
It doesn't necessarily even have to be part of the, the course content that the teacher has covered. Um, and again, this is about taking, again, responsibility for your own learning, being an inquirer, being a risk taker, and um, following your own ideas and passions and the teacher fostering that and working alongside you. Um, so these internal assessments are project-based in nature. They're often centered around an inquiry question or a research question, and um, it's marked by the teacher and comprises a portion of the final mark. So this is probably one of the major differences between the International Baccalaureate and other leaving programs. Um, where often their internal assessments or SACs or are often point events, um, which can sometimes be quite stressful uh, for students and doesn't necessarily allow them to develop skills or explore their own areas of interest. So that's another part of the program that I have always really liked um, is this, this idea of the internal assessment. Um, then of course there are external assessments and these are different depending on the course that you take as are the internal assessments. So um, assessments are designed really to develop skills and to, um, to provide feedback for the student and to allow them to explore an area of interest. Um, and so internal assessments and external assessments are all geared in that direction. But the external assessments are often exams um, for most courses in visual art, it wouldn't make sense to actually have an exam. <laughs> so they do an exhibition, for example. Um, musicians no longer take an examination on music theory anymore. They're composing pieces of work. They are um, comparing uh, different music composers and different styles of music for their musicality. So um, ba basically internal and external assessments are, are really about what does someone working in that area actually do, actually have to know, and what skills do they really have to have? Um, so these uh, external assessments, often exams, but not always, particularly for the art subjects, there are no exams. Um, yeah, so these are marked by the I IB um, and occur most often at the end of the two-year course. They're kind of the culminating event. <laughs> um, yeah, and it constitutes often a majority of the mark, but again, not all of it. Um, CAS and extended essay are the exceptions. CAS is purely process-based, as I've said before, and extended essay is a single piece of work, again, generated by the student under the guidance and mentorship of an individual teacher. Um, so here, actually, I've got an example, a really good one, of an internal assessment from visual art. This is called a process page. That's from a student in 2015. And she was doing an analysis of etching styles and did some investigating around different etching styles. You can see some um, pieces of work here, which she analyzed. And then she used that to inform her own work for the exhibition um, that she eventually did. Um, so this is again, very process-based uh, kind of assessment piece um, that, that is driven by what is the student is interested in. And here on the right, I have an assessment outline for my own course. <laughs> so I am also the history teacher. Uh, and so this is what a breakdown of assessments in my particular course looks like, both at higher level and standard level. So I might, I might stop there as well. And I'm wondering if anyone has any questions at this point you would like to pop into the chat for Tanya. Still nothing in the chat at this point, Ashley. Obviously just full of information and answering questions. <laughs> I was hoping to break it up <laughs> and not bore people to death. <laughs> All right. Yep. Very good. Well, I will move on then. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh. Hi, Alicia. Alicia's asking, are all the subjects for two years? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Yes, all of the subjects run over two years. Um, so yes, they are two year long courses, which again is a, a big difference between uh, the IB and the VC. One of our alumni talked about that <laughs> last week, saying that um, she'd never had to do anything like that before and hasn't ever since. Um, but we believe that gives the depth, right? So we have the breadth, which is by the, uh, the number of subjects, right? And across a, a range of areas. And the two years allows students to really go into depth um, in a subject area. 
We've also got a question from Ben, who said that you were going to mention why higher level was not available for some subjects. Is that still to come? Ah, uh, yes. So thank you very much for reminding me, Ben. So some subjects are only offered at higher level, at standard level. So for example, um, in languages, Spanish ab initio. Ab initio is from the beginning. So this means really that it's only offered at standard level. Unfortunately, environmental science um, from the IB is also only offered at standard level. And Eric is asking, what about maths? Is there higher level maths? There are two different maths courses. This is always a good question too, and <laughs> a common one. There are two different maths courses. One is applications and interpretation and the other is analysis. Um, and I, one of those is um, for engineering and for, uh, which is analysis. So you can think about them in terms of pure and applied mathematics. So analysis is the pure and applications is the applied. The, um, the analysis and approaches will get you into engineering and medicine um, and at standard level, that's enough. And uh, applications will is probably for those who are really looking to go into the humanities or the arts. So at the moment, Sophia Money does not offer either of those courses at higher level. We've got a couple more questions as well. Would you like to answer them now, Ashley? Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. So Rose is asking uh, her son's in year nine at the moment, and he might do engineering in the UK. Oh, yeah. Imperial needs a six in both HL maths and physics. Will this be available in two years time? That's Richard, actually, who's asking that. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Yes, it would be uh, international students going to uh, other places. We do have to look very carefully at prerequisites. So I would actually encourage uh, you to have a chat with me uh, at some stage when we do a follow-up meeting. Um, we do, we have offered physics in the past, um, and um, sometimes we get an interest in it but it's not always available. So I can't necessarily guarantee what will be available in two years time, um, but it is a subject that we have offered previously. And Alicia's also asked, can you choose environmental systems instead of group three or group four? Yes, that's exactly how it works. And is, is really why we have chosen that subject. It gives us more options, particularly in group three, people don't want to take history, which I don't know why anybody wouldn't, but um, it's not for everyone, it genuinely isn't. And so environmental science may suit uh, a student better. Um, we have had students in the past take environmental science and do two arts, which is a possibility as well. So it provides um, some flexibility for students who might wanna pursue various pathways. Great question. That's it for the chat questions at the moment. Wonderful. All right, I'll just keep going then. Back to the HR, I don't need to see that anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, that was it, actually. I think that was all my, that was, I, my presentation is done. <laughs> I went through it as fa faster than I thought I would. Perfect. All right. So in, unless there's anything else, anyone has a raised hand? Got through it nice and fast. Can't see any raised hands anywhere. All right. <laughs> I really, really appreciate everybody joining us. And uh, hopefully that was informative and useful to you. And um, I know whether you're a primary parent or uh, a secondary parent. Oh, there's Damien. Damien has it. I see his hand. Hello, Damien. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. Thanks Hi. very much for that. That was wonderful. I, I wanted to ask a question. I don't quite know how to ask it, but just in terms of uh, IB graduates and what they go on to do and how that compares with, say, VCE graduates. Um, so I don't know what that is, whether it's college entry or employment or anything. Can you speak to that in, in any way? Um, the IB has done a few studies um, and we have those available and can certainly send them in the follow-up email that, um, that we're going to send. Um, our, well, the IB has done some research and has found um, that students who graduate in, from the diploma, no matter where they come from, have a tendency to stay at university longer. They have um, fewer dropout rates. 
they tend to go further in terms of um, the degrees that they earn. <laughs> um, so they tend to go into masters and PhDs. Um, and yeah, they have lower dropout rates than their counterparts. And that was a study done at the University of Melbourne, I think in 2014. Um, looking back at IB graduates and, and particularly where they, how they went at university. Um, yeah, so I can, and a few of our graduates, a lot of our graduates have gone to do quite a variety of things, our graduates in particular, um, from doing engineering and uh, science to fashion design at RMIT to, um, you know, international relations at Georgetown and uh, now studying law at the Mel University of Melbourne. We had a graduate speak last week about that. Um, so it's quite, we have quite a wide variety um, among our graduates and we've had quite small cohorts. And so it's really amazing to see the breadth um, that that then allows students to do quite a number of things in a number of areas. Um, they've gone to University of Melbourne. We have um, one in Perth at the moment, um, one or two internationals. Um, we've had students who've not gone to university at all and gone traveling and are doing amazing things with circus and um, yeah, so I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, yeah, more. So that was a comparison. The University of Melbourne study was a comparison, presumably with with BCE, right? Uh, but uh, but also in. Do you know if there have been other studies in other countries where presumably the IB is, is usually run in parallel with, say, whatever local system is there? Um, if, if that is a, a general trend that they, they tend to be a little more yeah. uh, resilient in the academic setting, perhaps, or, or yeah, is, is uh, yeah. Yeah, that is, a, that is a finding that seems to be consistent across, um, across the world. So um, yeah, and anecdotally, what we have found with our students is that they will often write to us and will say, I had, to, I had to teach my classmates how to do something I learned in year 11 in the diploma. Um, I, had, I, was a, I, I was able to manage the workload um, better than my counterparts. I was able to bring ideas that my counterparts you know, hadn't even thought of yet. I was able to think outside the box. Um, sometimes that's negative because they get a little bored <laughs> in the first year of uni. But um, yeah, so I think that that's, that's a, a, a consistent finding. And um, yeah, there's, I think there's quite a lot of, um, I hate to say it, spoon feeding potentially in other, um, in other highly competitive um, environments um, where scores are paramount. There tends to then have a flow on effect to teaching where we give them the answers that we know are being expected on the test rather than getting them to think for themselves. Um, and so the IB is really about getting students to think for themselves. And I think that pays huge dividends later. And some of our alumni even spoke about that last week, talking about their jobs and saying, you know, I can think laterally where, um, and I'm not afraid to say it because I was in an environment at Sophia Mundy where that was acceptable for me to just put my idea forward. And they have found that that is a skill um, being fostered when they were very young here um, has served them very well later on throughout university and in, even in their working lives. Can I just share, share something as well that, that I found on the tours that Fiona and I do sometimes on Saturdays that um, we've actually had people join us on tours who aren't looking to enrol a child. Um, they're actually at university themselves um, and they come to us to see where it was some of their um, friends and students in their classes went to school because they're so interested in who these people are that are in their class who are really interesting people and who ask questions in their lectures that they can't believe that they're asking. So they're basically going to the school where these students went to to figure out how these people have become the type of people that they are. So they are finding them really engaging and interesting and empathetic and, and really deep um, reflective thinkers that they wanna find out where it was they went to school to become that person that they are as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tanya. 
So if there are no more questions, what I'll let you know is that there's going to be a follow-up email coming from Tanya <laughs> uh, and myself, uh, if you've got with some more details um, uh, about the diploma program, the subjects that we offer, um, as well as maybe some of that follow-up data research, if you're interested, um, and my contact details. So if you've got any follow-up questions that come to you after the session is over and you go, oh, I meant to ask Ashley that question, or I really would like to sit down and have a discussion about, you know, what's what's possible uh, for my child, because there are possibilities, for example, with languages that we haven't even discussed here uh, tonight, that um, you set up a meeting with me and contact me, and I'll be more than happy to sit down with anyone and um, chat through the diploma and, yeah, how we do it here at Sophia Monday. So thank you very much for joining us. And it's, um, yeah, it was a pleasure seeing you all and taking your questions.